Well, a very good morning to all of you. It's a beautiful Ottawa morning, sunny outside, uh, and I hope it's sunny inside. You know, we sing a song called Blue Skies and Rainbows and Sunbeams from Heaven. Some people don't like the song because they say that's not true. But from my, my, from my viewpoint, what the lyrics of the song says, blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven are all you can see when the Lord's living in me. And so the idea is, it's how you see things when Jesus is with you. It's not saying it's always blue skies and rainbows, but that's what you see, which is sort of like what we're talking about here today, right? It's the theme for, for the next little while is, is what do you see? And um, in Matthew chapter nine, We'll, we'll talk a little bit about this. And I, one of the things I love about Jesus, I mean, I just love about Jesus. It's, it's unbelievable that he was able to handle situations. It doesn't matter what situation he was put in. He knew exactly what to say, when to say it, how to say it. And he was just remarkable. And as a 34-year-old Christian, well, November 2nd will be 34 years old as a Christian. And um, I am more and more uh, uh, just excited and, 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 and thrilled and continue to go deeper into who Christ is and more impressed about this Christ. I mean, it's just, it's just remarkable. And, and so what we want to do, we, we looked at yesterday the idea that in order for us to have a positive uh, effect, um, mindset rather, it's it really a lot of times it depends how we look at things. And it's not an issue, I'm not at all into the power of positive thinking. That's not what this is. It's actually how you see things. Have you ever looked at a picture? You know, they show this on Facebook all the time. You look at something and then at one time you see this person sitting on the floor and then, and then you, you look at it long enough and you realize they're actually on the ledge of, 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 a, of a building. And, and, and the idea is it depends how you look at it. Or you look at a picture from one way and you turn it the other way, the very same picture, nothing's changed and it's completely different. It happens all the time, right? And um, a lot of that is like, it's like when you're a Christian. And, and there's a lot of people, actually Mel and I was wa were watching a movie last night and um, it was a Christian-based movie. And, 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 and you know, I, I like the way it, it hit me. One of the things that hit me is, they were talking about, you know, people struggle with certain things and certain concepts because they don't believe. They don't see things. They struggle with God being good when there's so much suffering. Can God really be all good and all powerful? Well, you struggle with that. If you don't trust and believe, who God is, but if you trust and believe that God is good and God is just and God is powerful, then it's actually possible to mesh it all together through the eyes of faith. And Joshua and Caleb, which is what we, uh, we looked at a, a much more uh, with a magnifying glass than other situations, was that they went into the land of Canaan the same land, seeing the same things, and had a different disposition. And it wasn't, oh, let's, let's, let's pull ourselves up and think positive. No, they, had, they saw it through the eyes that God was with them in spite of all of this. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 9, we look at this, and let, let, let's look at this a little bit. And, um, as we think about our day and we go about our day. 
So Jesus is is go about is going about doing a lot of good things. And in verse twenty seven, it says, um, "As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David.'" When he had gone indoors, the blind man came to him and he asked, do you believe that I'm able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes was restored. And their sight, rather, was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, see that no one knows about this. But they went about and spread the good news, spread the news about him all over that region. While they were going out, uh, a man who was demon-possessed and could not walk, could not talk, was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. The crowd was amazed and said, nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, it is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. And so we see... Jesus performed this incredible miracles. And the Pharisees, the religious people, saw something different. You know, it, it, it's a very, very interesting thing. And, and it's not the idea that we need to conform, but there's a lot of people who professed Christians are the stumbling block to them seeing who the Christ is. And it's, it, it's quite remarkable that sometimes when we look at situations, even as believers, we don't see what Jesus sees. And therefore we act differently. And, and, and we see a little bit of insight into Jesus in the next section, and, and which is kind of the theme we're going to talk about a little bit. It says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest labor to send out workers into his harvest field. Here is Jesus performing miracles, healing all these diseases, and crowds. You know, I don't know about you, but one of the things that, that it's important is that we, certainly in the ministry, um, is to take time and breathe. You know, uh, one of the things about being in the ministry is, is you get news from every angle, every day. There are euphoric news that I get with people, from people. One of the, um, the plan is one of the members, husbands are gonna get baptized this week in the congregation. And when, when it becomes more public knowledge, we'll, we'll, we'll let you guys know, but we're very, very excited about that. That's, that's as good as it gets, right? I mean, that's awesome. And then, in our emails and our mails, we get news about someone dying, someone getting sick. And so there's, there's from an emotional vantage point, it's just every single thing that, that, that goes on. Jesus had the unbelievable ability that when crowds were pressing him, he saw them exactly the way he needed to see them so that he was able to do what he needed to be do. And when he saw what needed to be done, when Jesus saw the crowds, he didn't say, he didn't see people who were pressing against him in this instance, who were bothering him, who were just, just a nuisance. 
he saw them as harassed and helpless. And so the, the idea is this, what do you see when you go about and you see someone acting a certain way? One of the things that what Jesus does for me and the way he treats people I now have to give pause when I do, when someone does something the way, when they shouldn't have done it that way, at least the way I deem it shouldn't have been done. Before I judge and talk about how evil and bad someone is, is to ask the question, why are they doing that? Not that we're excusing the behavior. You know, uh, uh, someone, Someone sometimes, uh, when we communicate so, something, some people can misunderstand what can be said. I abhor, I hate um, uh, rioting and looting. I hate, I would not be a part of something that is not peaceful. I will never, I don't condone it. It's not something that is good. But you ask the question, why? Why does someone do that? What's going on? When people are stealing, why? Why is this person stealing? Why are people acting the way they do? And so the idea here, Jesus, because Jesus saw them through the eyes of what their needs are, not necessarily in a linear way, meaning just what the eyes see, he also sees with his heart. And in order for us to see with our heart, and for, or for me to see with my heart, I've got to ask the question, why is that person doing what they're doing? That's the question. And so this morning, as we, as we come up with, a, with encounters that we have with people and someone is on toward, towards you and is not acting the way or say something really, 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 um, unflattering towards you. I'm not saying we ought to condone what is being said, but ask the question and you will deal with it in a different way. And it's because we don't look at people as a nuisance. You know, um, this whole idea of Melanie and I walking with you guys through this time of challenge every morning for those who can is to say to you, we are with you. And I don't know how well I'm communicating that, but that's what I'm trying to say. I am with you. We are going to walk with you through this time. That in this time of challenge, it's not everyone for themselves. And if we have a heart, when someone is acting in a certain way, if we ask that question, then Another way to phrase it is to seek to understand. And so the idea is that Jesus saw crowds not as a nuisance and, what happened, and that they were bothering him, but he saw them through eyes of compassion as harassed and helpless. It's how I get the motivation to do what I do. 
It's why I love to get with people. I love to meet with people and talk with them. And this is, this is not what I would like to do is to sit on in front of a screen and talk with people. That's, but that's the, it's the best we can do. And it's not because I'm great, but because God is really continuing to work on my heart. I got to tell you, I got to confess, there are times that I would have had a tough conversation and, um, and the next moment I see a phone call and I don't want to talk. I, 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 just, I just look at it and say, oh man, this is, this is going to be another one of those talks. And that's when the selfish part of me, that's when I'm not looking at people with the right eyes. I'm looking at people with the right heart. And so when we look out at the masses, not from an arrogant disp disposition, but from a disposition of because we have been enlightened, that people are not a nuisance, that crowds are not a bother, in spite of the, those who ought to know better, like the religious people, the Pharisees, they saw people being healed and they were worried about how it was being done. Meaning, so the question is, whenever you're bothered, I'm gonna ask you, ask yourselves, why are you bothered? Would this bother Jesus? I mean, it's amazing. It's really amazing. The man who hated sin the most. The man whose life, whose, uh, uh, whose life because of sin was crucified in the most heinous way. Crowds of sinners gathered around him. And the religious elite of the day could not grasp it. And instead of asking Jesus, how are you doing this? They started attacking him. Because they saw people with different eyes. Because he said, it is the healthy. It's not the healthy who needs a doctor, it's the sick. And so today... Let's think about this in our interactions with people. Uh, uh, um, how do you see them? Do they bother you? Or do you have eyes of compassion that ultimately sees them as harassed and helpless? Like I said, not, a, not certainly from an, an arrogant disposition, but from a disposition of seeing their their needs. What do they need? And so that's what, that's what the challenge is going to be as we, as we look at our neighbors. I, 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 I'll share with you. Um, you know, um, and one of our neighbors, and I'll just share, share an example with you. I don't know, but for whatever reason, their yard is they have not had time to mow their lawn. And so things are growing up in their lawn. And some of the neighbors have commented without knowing what's going on. The essence of what's wrong with these people? You don't know what's wrong with these people. You don't know what's going on. Don't judge because someone's yard in a certain way, maybe their heart is so heavy about other things that this is secondary to their line of thinking. And if someone is doing something that you wouldn't do, ask why, don't judge. Don't judge, just ask why. And you'll be able to see and feel what other people are seeing and feeling. 
That's the challenge. That's what, that's what I love about Jesus. He challenges me to the core of my being. That I see people not as a nuisance or as a bother, but simply as what can I do instead of why are they doing this? How can I ease what they're doing? And so that's the, that's the thought we're going to look at. That's the theme we're going to look at. Jesus, as, as he was doing this, his views were as harassed and helpless. And that's why he says, because people are harassed and helpless, the workers are few. The harvest is plentiful. He saw these people. He said, man, we have a lot of work to do here. Awesome. We got a lot of job. And one of the dispositions, when I'm thinking right, and, and I'm busy. This is what I say. I'd rather be busy than not be busy at all. When you're busy, you're needed. And so the challenge for us is to pray and to ask God to give us hearts that allow our eyes to see the right things. That's what Elisha prayed for his servant, right? He says, God, open his eyes. So he can actually see what's going on. What do you see? So let's pray this morning as we go about our day that we have eyes. Let's see what God wants us to see. Let's pray. Father, so good to come before you and to think about you and to think about your son and the way he walked this earth and he's such an upward call to us and yet father even when we stumble and we fall short his mercy is so full his grace is so incredible and, and, and yet father he's an upward call we want to represent your son very well we want to be his ambassadors and when people look at us they will praise your name who is in heaven. We don't want people to look at us and praise us, Father. And if that's what goes on in our hearts, sometimes help us to purify our hearts so that when people see what we do because we're imitating your son, they're saying, there is a God in heaven. And that it will inspire them to ask the question, why do you do what you do? And why do you think the way that you do? Jesus, as much as he went around doing good, he was, he was met with such resistance. The very people that he created became his enemies. The very people that he was helping, and yet he did not retaliate. He did not push them aside, but he continually reached out to them because he has heart. A heart that allowed his eyes to see. Give us that heart, Father. Give us that heart that allows our eyes to see what needs to be seen. So we act with such love and grace towards people. And yet, Father, that we're also full of truth. That we'll see your son when, when he helped people. He still warned them, go ahead and sin no more. And yet, the way he handled them was with such incredible mercy. Help us to have those kinds of hearts that when we treat people the way they ought to be treated, they will praise your name in heaven because they see the good deeds that has been done through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.